Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 8th of April. India reports 5,194 positive COVID-19 cases, 149 deaths so far. Kiril Baltistan minister accuses Pakistan of discrimination in its fight against COVID-19. And Asia's largest tulip garden shut for the first time in 13 years to curb coronavirus. And now for all the details. India's Health Ministry on Wednesday confirmed cases of novel coronavirus in the country have risen over 5,190, while the death toll has jumped to 149. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a meeting with parliament leaders said the situation in the country is akin to a social emergency. A crucial meeting to decide the future course of action on the 21-day nationwide lockdown was chaired by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi as the country saw 5,194 cases of novel coronavirus, while the death toll rose to 149 on Wednesday. Parliamentary floor leaders took part in the meeting via video conference in view of the rising cases. Prime Minister Modi in the meeting said the situation in country is akin to a social emergency. It has necessitated tough decisions and we must continue to remain vigilant. Total cases, if we total 5,194 positive confirmed cases report. And in last one day, 773 positive cases report. Total 149 deaths report. If we look at the deaths of yesterday, around 32 people uh, have died yesterday. Indian government will take a final call on extending the ongoing lockdown after the Prime Minister's second meeting with Chief Ministers via video conference on April 11. With the number of coronavirus cases showing a steady rise, several provinces have indicated that they would prefer an extension. In news from Pakistan, Global Financial Watchdog FATF has given Pakistan more time to meet the remaining action plan after it extended the deadline for the performance report submission as per Pakistani media reports. This came in wake of uncertainty caused due to the coronavirus pandemic that has affected over 4,000 people in Pakistan. In the aftermath of the spread of deadly COVID-19 virus that has killed more than 80,000 people in different parts of the world, Global Terror Financing Watchdog, the Financial Action Task Force or FATF, has extended its deadline for complying conditions for Pakistan for three months, as per media reports. According to Pakistan's leading outlet, Dawn, Islamabad was earlier required to submit a performance report by April 20th, but it will now be reviewed in October. In February, the Paris-based global watchdog against financial crimes gave Pakistan a four-month grace period to complete its 27-point action plan against money laundering and terror financing committed when it noted that Pakistan had delivered on 14 points and missed 13 other targets. FATF had strongly urged Pakistan to swiftly complete its full action plan by June 2020 or else it would be moved to the list of monitored jurisdiction commonly known as the watchdog's blacklist. Moving on. A Gilgit Baltistan minister has accused Pakistan of not providing monetary aid and the required healthcare equipment to the illegally occupied region to deal with COVID-19. Gilgit Baltistan has reported at least 211 COVID-19 cases so far. Information Minister of Gilgit Baltistan Sham Smir has accused Pakistan of not providing monetary aid and the required health care equipment to the illegally occupied region to deal with COVID-19. 
Shamsmir said in a press conference that it is unfortunate that Gilgit Baltistan has not got its share of 200 million US dollars in aid received by Pakistan from the World Bank to deal with the pandemic. Gilgit Baltistan has reported 211 COVID-19 positive cases so far. Federal government ne sabse badi zyadati hai ki ke dekhe jo ek bahut bade program ke tehat jo hai World Bank ne jo Pakistan ke liye funds jo diye ke ji chau suru me COVID-19 ko handle karne ke liye ye ye distribute ho gaye funds usme Gilgit Baltistan ko abhi tak shamil nahi kiya gaya. The minister expressed fears that the healthcare system in the region is not well equipped to deal with the situation. red zones Pakistan red zones have sampling shuru karni thi, lekin uske liye jo required hume jo resources ki zarurat thi, jisme medical equipment ki zarurat thi, kits ki zarurat thi, labs ki zarurat thi, wo bhi abhi tak Gilgit Baltistan mein nahi pahunchi. Ek lab jo bahut choti capacity mein kaam kar rahi hai, wo yahan par maujood hai. Recently, doctors in Gilgit Baltistan also held a protest demanding testing kits and safety gears to check suspected coronavirus cases. They blamed Pakistan for stepmotherly treatment to the region while highlighting lack of basic health infrastructure due to Islamabad's negligence. A key Taliban commander and his bodyguard were killed in a gunfight with security forces in Afghanistan, Takar province. Officials said the militants were planning to storm the headquarters of Baharak district. A key Taliban commander and his bodyguard were killed in a gunfight after the militants' plan to attack Baharak district in the northern Takhar province was foiled. Provincial government spokesman Mohammad Jawad Hajari said on Tuesday. A large number of Taliban rebels and a notorious commander Kari Ansarullah Gajar were planning to storm the headquarters of Baharak district on Monday night. But security forces ambushed the militants' convoy killing the commander and his bodyguard, forcing the militants to disperse, Hajari said. Rohullah Ahmed Zai, a spokesman for the Afghan Ministry of Defense, said on Tuesday that the Taliban has continued attacks on Afghan security forces across the country, and the forces also retaliate. The U.S.-Taliban deal signed in Doha in February had evoked hopes of peace among Afghans, but on the ground, the warring sides are still fighting. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa has urged citizens to support the government's effort to defeat the coronavirus amid rising cases of COVID-19 in the island nation. Sri Lanka has recorded six deaths from coronavirus and 137 positive cases as of Wednesday. Sri Lanka has recorded six deaths from coronavirus and the total number of infections is 185, out of which 137 are active cases as of Wednesday morning. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, in an address to the nation on Tuesday, urged the public to support government's efforts to defeat the coronavirus and rise as a strong country, self-sufficient of food and own industries. He praised the healthcare providers for their sacrifice and commended the tri forces and police for their tireless efforts to keep the spread of COVID-19 at bay. Rajapaksa also urged the public to remain at home amidst the rise in COVID-19 cases. The Sri Lankan government has stepped up efforts by taking several measures in its battle against the pandemic. Earlier, authorities released nearly 3,000 prisoners as a measure to prevent COVID-19 pandemic from spreading in countries' overcrowded jails. The island nation imposed a nationwide curfew on March 20 in an effort to contain the spread of the disease. It has also banned all incoming international flights indefinitely. More news from Sri Lanka. A Sri Lankan chef aboard the cruise ship has been brought to the Colombo Harbour by Sri Lankan Navy and sent for a 21-day quarantine period. The chef has made a distress call from the cruise ship pleading on social media for the government to help. A Sri Lankan chef who was stuck on a cruise ship adrift and headed to Europe managed to disembark in capital Colombo on Monday after pleading on social media for the government to help. Anura Bandara Herat was a chef on board the cruise ship MSC Magnifica 
which had to abandon its Asia-Pacific cruise route and return to its home base in Italy after countries banned it due to the coronavirus pandemic. Herat posted an appeal on Facebook to be allowed to disembark after learning that the ship was to stop in the seas of the Colombo harbour for three hours to refuel and resupply. His message was carried by a number of local TV stations and Sri Lanka President Gotabaya Rajpaksa eventually permitted his disembarkation with the help of the Navy. April Masa Hai Venida Sri Lanka with the Pamilian Wa Payatunaka Kaliak Sandaha. It in uh any the Mama Sri Lanka with Pamini Sandaha uh Garu Janadi Petit Maginot, Aka Matit Maginot, uh Sahai uh Balapurut Venwa Mukada Apanau Kavin uh Mata Lanka Veta in the Bari Unot, uh Nava to Europe Gianta Passe, uh in a Ita Mapahaswenawa. Upon arrival on land, Herat went through a strict disinfection process on dock before being transported to the Busa Naval Quarantine Center in the southern city of Gul for 21 days of quarantine. Despite richly hued flowers and full bloom, Asia's largest tulip garden in India, Jammu and Kashmir, will have no visitors this year. The garden, which attracts thousands of tourists every year, has been shut for the first time since its conception in 2007 to curb the coronavirus spread. Despite picture-perfect spring weather in India's Jammu and Kashmir and the richly hued flowers beaming in the sunshine, Asia's largest tulip garden will have no visitors this year to soak in its beauty. The Indira Gandhi Memorial Tulip Garden situated in Srinagar city has been shut for the first time since its conception in 2007 to prevent gathering of people and curb the spread of coronavirus amid the ongoing 21-day India lockdown. Located in the foothills of Zabarwan Hill and overlooking the famous Dal Lake, the Tulip Garden attracts thousands of tourists from across the world every year. We have a prime responsibility that we have to do with any public gathering. There are already restrictions and lockdown order in place. There are supplies and essential services. We have to do home delivery. We have to do with no footprint on the ground. तो इसको लेके चलते सभी गार्डन जो हैं वो क्लोज रहेंगे किसी किस्म का गार्डन्स में मूवमेंट एंट्री अलो नहीं की जाएगी। On Tuesday, the flowers were the only sign of life in the garden. India has reported over 4,000 coronavirus cases so far and more than 110 deaths. Amid the despair surrounding the outbreak of COVID-19, a shop owner in India's eastern Kolkata city has come up with a unique way to lift people's spirit by making coronavirus-themed sweets. A confectioner in India's eastern Kolkata city has come up with an original idea to fight coronavirus, eating it to beat it, as he made coronavirus-themed sweets to combat fear related to coronavirus pandemic. India is under complete lockdown till April 15 except essential services to curb rapid spread of the deadly virus that has killed over 81,000 people worldwide. However, India's Eastern West Bengal government had last month allowed sweet shops in the state to remain open for four hours a day amid the lockdown. Laughing on the face of the global pandemic, sweet shop owner and president Sweet Industry of West Bengal Ravindra Kumar has made cupcakes, cakes and other sweets in a shape representing the virus. This is the thing came in my mind that uh, I am to do something by which people of our country, they will get some, uh, they will get rid of the fear. So for that reason, it works in my head and actually uh, for that reason, I have uh, gone for uh, these slogans. We are fighting against corona, we will digest corona. India's West Bengal province has recorded 99 positive cases of COVID-19 so far and three deaths. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन